How do you think the person in this photo is living or dead? Our last guest tonight believes that by looking at a photograph, she can tell us something about the person in that photo, including whether or not that person is alive or dead. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Agnes Freeman. Agnes, earlier in the day, we gave you five photographs. They're smaller versions of the ones we now have behind us. Choosing the photograph was a difficult task. We've tried to ensure that as few clues as possible remain. Surroundings, clothing, hairstyle may all give a clue as to the age of a photograph. And thus, the likelihood as to whether or not the person is living or dead might be given away. I believe he used a pendulum to divine whether or not each person is living or dead? Correct, yes. Now, how does that work? Um, if the person is alive, the pendulum is turning usually right. If the person is dead, either it's not turning at all, or I don't get any kind of reading on the person. So it's whether or, or not on the aura. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, Agnes has told us that if she is successful tonight, she would like to go on to a second test, independently supervised, to claim the $10,000 that I have offered for many years to anyone who can produce psychic phenomena under controlled conditions. Is that right, Agnes? That's right. All right. Well, first things first, let's see how well you'll do with just five photographs. Now, there are tough odds against getting all five correct. This first photograph, uh, what do you make of this lady? What I made out of this lady is, <clears throat> I got the name, she's alive. Yes. And uh, her name is Sandra, or somebody who belongs to her. The name is Sandra, and a lot of sadness in the past. Alive or dead? Now? She's alive. She is alive. All yes. right, we'll put a tick on that one to indicate that this is a living lady. I hope you're correct. Now, on number two here, we have a young gentleman um, of unknown profession. What would you tell us about him? Well, he's very much alive, and uh, what I got to see is around him. I also get the feeling of teaching on the Irish connection, and I see him also um, got something to do with the Swiss Alps, either yet or going to there in the near future. So that this uh, gentleman is alive. Then, she is alive. All right, we'll stick a tick right up there on his eye, so we'll remember. And uh, number three, this rather exotic-looking gentleman uh, with a little goatee. What do you say what about I him? What I is, is very much alive. And he's a born mystic, psychic, artistic, musical, uh, whatever you can think of. He, he got everything about everything. So you say that he's alive as he's well. He's alive. And so he gets the red tick. And moving on to this. Uh, more elderly gentleman? Or? The elderly gentleman is alive as well. He is? Yes. Um, what I pick up to see is um, the eyes. So he is alive, He's alive. he has problems with the eyes. Very well. And he gets the red tick as well. So thank you very much, Agnes. Now for number five. What do you say about this gentleman? This gentleman is not alive. I have got no kind of, any kind of readings on him. And also I felt the photographs very cold. I also I get some that with him in the past. Uh, whatever I got in him, the reading, what I have time for, is all in the past, not in the present. Now, you see? Well, thank you very much, Agnes. Would you join me over here, please? Yeah. Let's just review your psychic decision of the condition of each person shown. You said number one is alive, number two is alive, number three is alive, number four is alive, and number five is dead. Let's see who's really still alive. All of them, except number two. So you got three correct and two wrong. I'm sorry, Agnes. I know that's not what you had hoped for. Nevertheless, you did come along to participate, and I think you deserve a big thank you. In the case of the psychometry test tonight, in which keys and wristwatches were matched up, as well as in the matching of handwriting to professions by means of graphology, we expected one match would be made if chance alone were operating. The living or dead test with photographs, which you have just seen, called for two or three to be correct by chance alone. In all three cases, our guests have scored just what chance would call for, so that in our admittedly small number of trials, none of the special skills or powers seem to have been demonstrated. The question remains, do these abilities really exist? Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the evidence you make up your own minds. I'm James Randi. Good night.